Welcome to the Nonprofit Report, your update on nonprofit organizations, issues, and leaders. I'm your host, Mark Oppenheimer. Today, we're talking about the inspiration of art with fantastic special guests, Jane Golden, Executive Director, and Natanelle Portier, Senior Director of Learning and Practice at Neural Arts Philadelphia. So thank you so much, Jane. Thank you, Natanelle, for, for coming and sharing your work. I'm just really excited because anything that has to do with art is sort of intrinsically exciting, and your art is at the at the confluence of social change, communication, community involvement. It's just it's just such a wonderful program. Jane, could you talk a little bit about how you became involved in mural arts, what is now Mural Arts Philadelphia? Because the story itself is is so fascinating. Yeah, well, I had. Um gone to Stanford University. I was a double major, fine art and political science. I thought I'd go to law school, but I moved down to LA and I saw these glorious murals and I my own paintings were very large and I saw myself sort of as a social realist painter. And I was really drawn to to murals. I love the murals in in Mexico and the artwork created during the WPA in this country during the 1930s. So I saw these glorious murals just everywhere. And I did some research and found out there was an organization that you could apply to to do a mural. So I applied to this organization called Spark, run by this extraordinary person named Judy Baca. And I ended up getting a small grant to do a very large mural. And it was incredibly inspiring. And I realized as I was painting that art really does belong to everyone that um, museums and galleries were wonderful, but that art did not belong exclusively behind those walls. And that murals were a wonderful way of delivering art to people across LA. So I did this big mural in Santa Monica, and then I ended up painting one mural after the next. And I then became rather ill, I have lupus, and I moved back East, I'm from the East Coast, uh, Margate, New Jersey. And I was coming up to Philadelphia for treatments and I, Read, started reading the Philadelphia Inquirer, trying to become familiar with being back East again. And I read that Philly had a new mayor, Wilson Good, our first black mayor. And he was addressing a lot of things that were happening in Philadelphia. One was the fact that there had been an abundance of graffiti and graffiti was everywhere. People referred to it as a social epidemic. And he said that he was going to create a program called the Anti-Graffiti Network, where he would work with young people, but he would also um, work with them to develop their art skills. And so I ended up applying to anti-graffiti and I got hired. And for 10 years, I worked with graffiti writers. We painted murals. We ran programs all over the city. It was enormously like educational, inspiring, um, transformational for me personally and for my career. And so I think that I thought about murals, started painting murals in a very small way in LA, came to Philly. And it was very clear to me that people in our city felt a connection to art and especially art that was created with their ideas in mind so that they became the primary author of what was in their neighborhood. And that's really as it should be. But I was totally inspired by the young people, block captains, community leaders, all informed how I thought about the world and art making. And then we became Mural Arts in 1997. So that was that was very exciting. I, you know, I never and thought it would happen. People forget that moment in time, right? In 1985, we had the move bombing That's in correct. Philadelphia, which was right. in a in a neighborhood, basically law enforcement bombed and caused tremendous destruction and loss of life um, from what was a a a, a, a protest, uh, sort of almost a commune kind of setup. Um, and there were there were questions of whether there were um, there were criminal elements, but regardless. It was an overreach, and it was there were so many people who were harmed and damaged, and, and the entire reputation of the city, its law enforcement professionals were damaged. Um, Wilson Good basically was taking an approach in which he's saying, we see signs of creative energy that doesn't have an outlet in the graffiti artists. And how do we create a positive outlet? Now, Tanel, how did you get involved in the organization? I got involved um, as an administrator, but with a background in socially engaged arts. 
And what was the heart of the interest in the work I was doing was the people, was community, was the stories, was giving them agency to make decisions for what their public space looks like, how it feels. Um, and it's I saw really, shift, it's, a, hmm? it's a power shift when you're talking about yes, agency. Yes, exactly. Talking about a power shift, power yes, shift. and the power of collaboration, right? And what art can do to bring people together, to make decisions together, to imagine their future together um, is so powerful. And that's really what draw me to working with Jane, with my colleagues at Mural Arts Philadelphia um, in a number of different roles over the past 15 years. So let's let's unpack the idea of a mural because Jane, you referred to it before. There are elements here that are interesting, right? First of all, murals are not generally exhibited in galleries where somebody has to enter, perhaps pay admission, uh, be a little bit intimidated by walking into a particular environment. The artists themselves, when they are when they are painting a mural, they're out in the open. They are exposed to people walking by and people are seeing the art actually cre uh, being created. Murals are very often um, imbued with uh, various messages that are fairly easy to interpret. And they exist in a cityscape uh, that is not protected like a gallery is. The city itself is moving and changing and, and buildings are going up and you're thinking about shadows and sun and where the sun is coming and, and so on. So talk about that very immersive, involved, interaction between the artists, the communities, and how that actually unfolds in the work that you do and how you approach your work. You're not you're not able as a muralist to work in a studio in complete isolation if you are a muralist. You're actually in dialogue with everyone, aren't you? You are. And I think that the the art form here beyond just the painting is the work that one does with the community that you really have to empower the artist to listen to, to, to be, you know, they have to understand that they have agency, but they also are working in someone else's home. So they have to be incredibly respectful and really listen. And the community has to understand that the artist is the magician who's going to bring their ideas to life. So you have to respect the artistic process. So both entities really need to hear each other and collaborate and try to come up with something that is, you know, maybe visioned by a lot of people, but created by a small group of professional artists. And I think that's tricky and complicated. And it's sort of a miracle to me that we do over a hundred projects a year because of that complexity. And I think now because of the way we are creating the art, it's on sheets of parachute cloth, um, the image is digitized. So we are working in studios across the city, but then the work goes up and uh, is painted by a team of master artists. But during the process, we have paint days. So people are invited in to help us create it. And I think that if people are invited in to visualize it and then are part of the process, they feel like they are co-owners of the work. And that is really of vital importance. Netanel, what would you say? Yes, that is completely correct. Um, and the artists that we work with, just the range of skills that they bring to this work from facilitation, listening, um, being present in the community, but also designing uh, a moving and an inspirational work of art, and then producing that with the community and creating accessible opportunities for them to not only have their voices heard, but then, you know, put their hands into the artwork itself as well. It's just, it's an incredible range of skill sets that these artists have. And and the other thing that I think is, is really interesting is the idea of people of different ages, right? The younger set are all accustomed to these, right? Um, the people who are uh, older have, might have a different view of, of their city, the changes that are going on. You have people of different races and different ethnicities and different linguistic groups. You have people of different education levels. How do you ensure that this public art 
is going to be an art of of cohesion, of messaging, of thoughtfulness that is holistically embraced by all these different people who are going to be very opinionated, right? I mean, people do not leave their opinions at the doors when they are viewing art. So they're going to have feelings about about this. How do you how do you ensure that people feel like your programs are really reflecting the vibrancy and the diversity of Philadelphia? And I mean diversity not as a race issue. It's education. It's age. It's ability and disability. It's it's basically everything: thought processes, political ideas, and so on. How do you how do you get to that? without creating just an oatmeal mush of flavorless art that offends nobody. Uh, Netanel, why yeah, don't you start know, off and then start? we'll go to Jane. Yeah, I think it's being very attentive to the process and to the relationships that we are building with people in doing this work, being really transparent on how decisions are being made, who's making those decisions, Um and disagreements unfold, right? Yeah, right. And and knowing how to manage those, right? How to lean into those opportunities for shared learning and understanding and connection between people, right? And in these processes, it's really it's a form of practicing democracy, right? And the the diversity of voices, including included in that space. Interesting. Have- art as democracy, because you know people don't <laughs> think about art, free art making as a democratic process. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, someone that once described our work as the visualization of democracy, because people have a lot of control over what's going on in their neighborhood, probably more than they have more control over that than many other things that happen in, in the city. Mm-hmm. So when you how, how is a site is sele- selected? Does somebody come to you and say we have a site here um, or is, is it somebody who owns a building and, and they have a sort of a blank wall and they say, you know, this is kind of ugly and let's let's transform it how, how does that work Mural, okay. murals happen five ways one we have a, a mural application process so anybody anywhere can apply for a mural they have to make a good case and we're looking at what you the question you asked Netanel. that's those are the, the those are the aspects of an interest that's what makes an interesting project so we're looking for diversity of viewpoint subject matter um, you know, where would it be? How are people thinking? And we try to create an equitable distribution of where public art is being created throughout Philadelphia. So that's one way. The second way is we have departments at Mural Arts and they have um, like their own body of work that's related to what they do, like in the, working in the criminal legal system or working with the Department of Behavioral Health or education. They're very connected to that to those areas. Then the third way is an artist could have an idea. So we set aside some funding. It's like risk capital, almost like so we can test ideas. The fourth way is a funder could have an idea. The fifth way is that the city could say there's, you know, an increase in gun violence and we want peace murals throughout Philadelphia. So we sort of stay facile, open and responsive to citizens. At the same time, we're trying to chart a course that will be really evocative, impactful and inspiring. Art with particular messages can can tip into the propagandistic, right? Mm. In which certain um, political viewpoints or certain um, views of society become promulgated uh, by uh, the art itself. If you're developing a hundred murals, how do you ensure that you're not you don't become representative of a small a cadre of very opinionated people? That's a great question. But I, I think that in the process, the, the preliminary process of talking to people, investigating the site and what people want, I think that's where you can try to mediate uh, any issues that might be complex or problematic. I'm not saying that our work is apolitical. It's not but it's not didactic. And we feel, I'll say I feel acutely aware of the fact that we are in part a city agency. So if someone wants to do really revolutionary imagery, they can do that in Philly, we can't do it. So Godspeed, (laughs) but I mean, we can, we've looked at issues of equity, racism, 
We've talked about immigration reform. We've talked about the criminal legal system. I mean, but we do it in a way that is that brings people together so that the work is not alienating. Instead, it brings people into a public space for discussion and discourse and exchange. And that's different than other organizations or other cities might might do. And that's that's like I have great respect for people who work many different ways other than our methodology. But I feel like we are very protective of the fact that we do get public dollars and we do have a responsibility to the public and to the city um, to do work that is is thoughtful and deep, but that's respectful. You know, that's really interesting. The whole idea of the connection to um, to, to municipal government and how the politics unfolds in a municipal government uh, context in which different voices will argue over issues. And you have to be very careful to, over periods of time, not be generic, but to um, conduct yourselves in a way that these different voices see within your organization a benefit for the entire citizenry. It's really the the political process at work within an arts context. It doesn't mean that that I'll love every mural that you do. I might hate some of them. Yeah. But if I feel that you are basically trying to uh, provide a service and you're listening, then you're also listening to my constituents, right? That's right. Exactly. And and Netanel, how would you respond to that? That was a good question. Yeah, I just I think I would um, just focus in on the role of the arts in our community, right, and artists and the opportunity to really explore and advance solutions to a whole range of social issues. Right. And so if you focus on what those issues are that everyone can agree to, right? Because they're they're very obvious ones. <laughs> that um, that yeah, that it's an opportunity to to bring people together around those issues and think creatively and differently and offer new opportunities um, to build on those. So let's talk a little bit about um, how you once you create a, a mural, how do you ensure you have you have three thousand? How do you care for them? How do you ensure because the yeah. cities change sometimes? An empty lot is no longer going to be an empty lot. There's going to be construction taking place. Uh, Jane, how do you preserve those those uh, murals that that you might have worked on uh, in in '97 or or even before that in in the '80s? Right. Well, we have a good database. Uh, we are connected to the public art archives. We are trying to list every extant like mural that is still there. We are. Um, acutely aware that developers often tear down or build in front of a mural without talking to anyone. So we're trying to um, really to work hard with community members to be our eyes and ears so that when uh, a fence goes up and uh, we, we can tell that something is going to happen, that we can make a beeline to reach out to the developer to see if there's if we have any options like can you build a can you build in a surface in the new building? Can you provide funding for something new? Like we need to raise the consciousness level that we when pe people when that happens that pe the developers are taking away a civic asset that's really important to people and to our history of our city and who we are as Philadelphians. The arts sort of a marker of our times. And so we try hard to do that, knowing that we might only succeed a fraction of the time, but at least we know we're trying our best. The second thing is we're working with city council to try to introduce an amendment that would mean that before developers move on to zoning permits, they would have to inform us, not pay, but just inform us that this work is going to be done. So we're continuing to work on that. And then the third thing is we have a very small restoration fund that we leverage really well. And um, we try to restore and preserve as many murals as we can. The problem is, is that I think... Um, People want to support us either programmatically or for new things. They're not so inclined to fund restoration. And I want people to know that it's this, this collection is really iconic and it sets our city apart from other cities. We're known internationally as the city of murals and we have to protect it. 
And if we don't work hard and work with great intention and tenacity and dedication, the collection can go away. So we all need to be involved in this. And that's like our responsibility to keep waving that flag. And it would be my dream goal would be to have a cash reserve for restoration. I would like to also add a suggestion for you. Works uh, that an art uh, that an artist has have developed are so precious. They should be available in different forms um, that benefit the artists as well. Um, I would very strongly be supportive of, of an agreement between yourselves and your artists to take their works and create out of those works um, either uh, books or or digitized uh, posters, that that type of thing that people in the in Philadelphia can can acquire that would benefit the artists and benefit your organization. Uh, mm -hmm. It would just be uh, so important to preserve those works and not have them go away. I mean, could you imagine if Leonardo's um, great uh, painting of the Last Supper were allowed to fall and it's a mural? Right? It's it a work on a, on a wall. Um, so we, have three, we do have three mural books and we're going to have a fourth out in a year. Um, we don't really have, po we don't really have too many posters or prints, but we have note cards. We should do better. We should have more prints. I think. <laughs> I just, I just think, you know, art is such a gift and, and to have these artists uh, out there and there are ways to do this. Uh, but uh, Natanel, in terms of, of the work that you do with the Institute, could you just describe what you're doing yeah. there and how you're promulgating it? And then let's talk a little bit about what's coming next, some of your fundraisers, some of your events, to make sure our audience is here about that. But Natanel, could you talk a little bit about the Institute? Yeah, um, the Mural Arts Institute was founded in 2017, partially in response to requests we were receiving regularly from other organizations, um, city leaders, individual artists, nonprofits from across the globe that we had been receiving regularly. And we really needed to build a team to be responsive to those requests while also offering opportunities for more individuals and organizations to engage with our practices. So we're really um, rooted in building connections, sustaining relationships, sharing our skills and our practices that have been so successful in Philadelphia with others and helping them explore how to adapt those practices um, in a responsive way to their own communities and goals that they're looking to achieve. Um, and so it's it's a really um, exciting area of work um, where we work with a whole range of different individuals and organizations across the globe. That's superb. That's superb. So, Jane, what's going on next at, at uh, uh, Mural Arts Philadelphia? Well, Netanel had mentioned earlier, it's our 40th anniversary year, so we have all kinds of interesting programs going on. Um, we are also um, really excited to have a few very well-known artists lined up who will be coming to Philadelphia to work with us. We're already working on uh, a very large project for 2026, the 250th anniversary of our of the founding of our country, uh, which will be a major printmaking project created in every library in the city, where we'll be asking people to uh, reimagine the Declaration of Independence and respond to it. And um, we'll have a huge giant citywide exhibition, and then all the information will go into the creation of a of the big mural. We're also working with an artist, Alex DeCourt, who will be creating a new sculpture for our city. So we're excited about that. Um, we are uh, working with a wonderful ceramicist who's uh, from a part of our city called Kensington, who's making these giant vessels that will be in parks throughout Kensington. And we're going to have a mobile pottery studio. And then we're working with another artist who is rethinking what used to be called the Italian market and now is called the market. And she refers to it as our market. It's completely multicultural. She's working to redo the vendor stands, add lights, like just rethink this market and bring it into the 21st century and embrace all the different communities of people that live there. So it's a fabulous project. And we're doing all these murals and programs at the same time. <laughs> wow, wow. Let's know what did I miss? So <laughs> so amazing. You have you have a fundraiser in May, I believe. Yes. On May 3rd, coming up, our annual wall ball 
Um, really leaning into roots and reimagination, our 40th anniversary um, celebratory theme this year. Um, and that's, yeah, so May 3rd, 8 to 10.30 p.m. in Philadelphia. All the information's online, wallball.muralarts.org. It's a great event, a lot of fun, and a great opportunity to connect with so many diverse artists from across the city as well. So I have another special request, and I don't know whether it's possible, but it would be fantastic to have a map of Philadelphia that is populated with, with your murals so that when I visit Philadelphia, I can do a tour of your art as if I'm touring a gallery and the gallery is Greater Philadelphia. Do we, we have a map on our website, right? A small map. Yeah, there are multiple. There's a link to the public art archives where you can literally see pins of every single mural that we've included in that database online on a map. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a tours department that regularly offers walking tours, trolley tours in different neighborhoods. Um, so you can go either way, explore, choose your own adventure, or sign up for a tour with our tour department. Wow, that's even better than my request. So we're going to post those links. If if you could point those mm -hmm. out, because I'm I'm looking at your at yeah. your sites, I'm trying to to uh, to find them. We'll make those really accessible to any viewers here that mm -hmm. are that are interested in coming, particularly those from the Philadelphia area. And we'll we'll send out a special um, a special notice of, of, of these tours. If you send us the links, that would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Shane Golden, Executive Director, and the Tanel Portier, of, uh, Senior Director of Learning and Practice of Mural Arts Philadelphia. Thank you so much for helping to beautify one of the great cities of the world and of the United States. Uh, we so admire your work, and please thank your artists. Please thank your communities Please thank your staffs, your board, your funders. It's just wonderful, wonderful work. We very much appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thanks thank for having you. us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Great.